Welcome to Auntie K's, your favorite radical queer indigenous auntie bringing you tarot every day. Hello folks and welcome to Auntie K's Tarot. Um, today as I'm recording, Facebook is down, Instagram is down, WhatsApp is down, and YouTube is up. YouTube is up. It, um... It takes a whole lot of internet to do um, uh, YouTube live. So I am going to record this with as little edits as necessary and um, get it compressed and converted and as up to you as quickly as possible. Because I prefer to save my live internet connections <laughs> for appointments. All right, so we're going to talk about decks I'm using, what's changed, what <coughs> what hasn't changed. I'm going to apologize if I cough um, a little bit. Um, I was choking um, on my sandwich um, uh, just prior to the big crash. <laughs> um, so... My throat uh, does not feel awesome, but I'm a Gemini and I want to talk. So, Lambac Tarot, Tarot and Oracle of Colonization, um, I I created it. I love it. Um, I use it. Um, I use it a lot, um, but I also have an interesting relationship um, with it, um, from some of the ways that be, because from creating it, um, it doesn't push me. <laughs> it doesn't push me to read my own deck. Um, but I do love reading my own deck and I do like having a variety of decks to use. Um, one of the things I love about it is the faces um, of friends and family and images that aren't faces of friends and family, but, you know, they were, they're inspired by people in my life. And so, um, you know, um, inspired by people in my life, people in my life. And so there's certain types of readings that really, really work for me with this deck um, in sort of my own special way. All right. So I recently got Desert Illuminations. Um, I love this deck. I feel super seen in this deck. I feel that the creator knew that diversity is more than just Sticking brown people in a deck, they knew that there's places you shouldn't stick brown people in a deck, especially a Southwest deck. And that's one of the things that makes this particular diverse deck really special. Um, and like, it's, it's got indigenous folks, it's got sci-fi, it's got the, my, you know, love of a good rainbow puke, um, done super tastefully, I'm going to say, and, um, I, I'm really pleased with this deck, and it is, um, it's, I'm nervous to say it's going to be as much a favorite as Landback Tarot, and next world tarot but but it might it it really might um a surprise deck in my collection the self-love tarot we know white decks do not stay in my collection all white decks tend to go in you know out as fast as they came in um one of the things about this deck is when I get a deck, I check out the creators, the artists. I check, I check them out. Who, who are you? 
Um, and this was a review deck, so it's not like I was checking them out long before I purchased the deck. Um, but um, I noticed that the project they were currently working on was very diverse. And there's nothing that makes me happier in life than beginning a journey into anti-racism. And that starts with saying, this project is going to be very diverse and I'm gonna push far outside of my comfort zone. Awesome. That brings a happiness to my relationship with this deck. Um, that I like it. I don't use it for all my clients because as I said before, I, the majority of my clients are BIPOC folks. So, um, but if, if I really need the self-love tarot, I use it and I feel more free to use it, um, you know, for the, the white clients that I do have. Um, and I've used it for a light passing friend also because it was the deck they needed. Um, it's pippish, highly pippish. I like it. There's a lot of energy in the colors. It's called a self-love tarot because like, you know, nobody here has like some idealized Western society, idealized body. And um, that is um, a diversity that is deeply needed in tarot. We just need it to um, be diverse in other ways too. And this is an artist who's recognized that. Again, my love of rainbow puke. Again, beautiful. And also, um, you know, tasteful. I'm such a conundrum. I like simplicity, minimalism, min minimalism, and rainbow puke. Th that's my aesthetic. Simple, minimalistic, rainbow puke. <laughs> okay, so I was looking for diverse Marseilles. There is one that is on my radar when it's available to order. Going to find it, put it right up here. All right. And then I have the Seven Sphere Marseille. And um, I like it. And I'm going to pull out um, some. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull out some examples of quartz and examples of majors. And I'm also going to do that um, for. Um, I'm also going to do that for the other Marseille deck I have um, because I think you're, there's differences in the two that um, I definitely do want to show. Okay. So here is the seventh Fear Marseille. Um, So one of the things about Seventh Sphere Marseille where I really have to pay all kinds of attention is that I don't read French um, and, um, you know, the images are there, um, but sometimes they are a little bit um, like a little bit abstract. Funny, actually, some of the more abstract ones I like totally get right on point um and there's some things about um there's okay i've pulled out some cards and now we can talk about the differences so we things are a different sort of like um there are minimalism that adds a bit of abstractness to the cards you know what card this is um some of them like it you know there's symbolism there like 
I never forget that this is the high priestess because there's like, you know, this book and this eyeball and this high priestessy crown thing. Um, devil, the tower, the moon, the Pope, the chariot. Um, so these are, the, here's a court card, um, a pentacle. So these are, these are kings. These are knights. Here's some pips. Um, the swords pips are really different in this deck. And I should show you this is, um, the emperor. Okay. Four eyes instead of a V and an I always throws me off queen. Um, I do need to show you the swords in this deck because you do have to pay attention to them because you're really counting hilts, not tips. The tips are blended in here. Um, so this is a five, but it's also got a five there. So this deck is um, predominantly um, heads or hands or bodies of, of color, predominantly. Um, so this is seven sphere. It's um, like abstract in a different way. And the people in both decks, you don't see usually the legs to determine positioning that way. In this deck, they are less facing the way you would typically see. In um, Latero Archetypal, that's what this one's called, Latero Archetypal, often the direction is indicated by their eyes. Um, so this one is diverse, but less diverse. And the color palette it's chosen means that darker skinned people tend to um, not uh, tend to have less natural skin tones like blue. Um, here's uh, a um, an ace, and um, the aces have pentacles symbols in them instead of just being a coin if that bothers you it does not bother me i happen to like the pentacle symbol um and the courts are all um silhouettes and um they're fairly pared down silhouettes they all have like these gentle backgrounds in them i i do like both decks um I love that neither deck is historic. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm good. I really want to do a Marseille deck and it's not going to be historic, but one thing I do want to do is I want to do that and still incorporate like body positioning. Um, I still want to incorporate body positioning. So those are my TDM decks. And um, I largely am using them in personal study. They're on my personal study pile. All right, surprises. Also, I've not been using um, this deck. Um, outside of financial readings, job readings, um, I find it really good there. Uh, this is the Sorry, this is the Star Spinner Tarot. I find the Star Spinner Tarot really good for... We're going to put this aside and talk about this. Um, for, um, personally, for financial and job-related readings. But I have other decks that do that, too. Um, it isn't as... It's diverse, but it's not as diverse as I'd hoped. All the kings are um, animals... It does have four lovers cards to give us variety in um, relationships. But beyond that, the decks, beyond those lover cards, the decks really very heteronormative. Uh, oops, that's <laughs> mixed in. Um, so beyond that, this deck is really very heteronormative. I love the art. Some of the characters I absolutely adore. I do. Um, 
and I definitely am not going to let go of it, especially since I find it useful for um, a certain niche of readings. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, you know, once I complained about it out loud, what my frustration was, um, I reached for it less. So, there is, um, there is four lovers cards. Um, there's these two, and then there's another two. The other two are both light-skinned or white folks. And in this case, it's a light-skinned person with a dark-skinned person. And that's just, I'm tired. I'm tired of that as diversity. Um, BIPOC folks are not a singular race. We're multitudes of races, and we can have diverse relationships with other people of color. And I, once I say it, I, I reach for it last. But I do absolutely reach for it um, for financial readings. For financial readings. I don't need it for diverse relationship readings be, um, because I can use this deck. Mine. I can use this deck for diverse relationship readings. They do that really well. Um, they, they do, um, even feel I could with this deck. So, um, <clears throat> I do also use still my Kaleidodope deck, um, but I do use it, um, less. And so I get excellent readings with this deck. I find this deck reads beautifully um it is heteronormative um but uh the color explosion of some of my other decks does make me reach for them more and that's what it is it's a color palette choice it's the only reason i reach for this deck less i really do like this deck um and so we already discussed that i have <clears throat> A rainbow puke aesthetic and uh crystal banner does not but she has this beautiful stunning um you know minimalist aesthetic that i really really um do enjoy okay you know what i'm gonna pause here and make myself a drink so then there's the flip. Do I want to talk? No, I don't want to talk about the flip yet. We'll get to that. So then there's Mari's deck. So gentle tarot. This was my um, study deck before the Marseille um, because I struggled with animal decks and Mari's deck is a combination of, that's an outline of a human, of animals. <laughs> and um humans and it's from an indigenous perspective so the perspective was a worldview that matches my own and it was a combination of humans which i find easy to read with in a deck and animals which is my struggle and um beautiful use of rainbows as well as muted colors, um, a combination of minimalism and detail. So this was a deck to help me with animal decks. And after my study, I had a moment of not trusting myself. <clears throat> and then I picked this deck up. And... Um, was really pleased with, um, with just reading this deck beautifully. And, um, so a combination of understanding the worldview. Oh man, my lighting's not good here. I didn't realize that. And I'm kind of sorry. Okay. So, um, a combination of understanding the worldview, a connection with the deck, a love of the art, and a bit of what I um, find easy to read 
uh, and a bit of what I find difficult um, helps me level up in an area I wanted to, which was being able to breed with animal ducks. Um, I don't know that that means I'm going to start going out and buying a whole lot of animal ducks, but mixture ducks, I'm probably going to feel much more comfortable purchasing now. And um, I'm really happy about that. Um, so we already talked before that Next World Taro is a deck that I think is just a 10 out of 10. Everybody, know, if you don't know this, you can watch other videos. Pose. I, I, this is a 10 out of 10. It checks every diversity box. It does it beautifully. It has this decolonial worldview that the guidebook, I, I've read from the guidebook at like a book reading as, as pieces of poetry. The, the guidebook is ah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, so that's what's my favorite deck alongside my own, the next world tarot. Um, out of the box, I have the Living Wheel Astrology deck. And um, so these are the backs. This deck is a work of art. Um, I do use this deck for timing. And I use this deck for um, reading astrology um, when I want to study a chart. <clears throat> it did not fit well on my last kitchen table. It does not fit well in my camera frame. But when I lay this out on the floor or on a large table, oh, it's like an as the astrology wheel in this large form to look at. And I really love it. I love the use of there being different moon phases in this deck and also seasons and the seasons are divided into late and early summer spring fall and winter and um so that's how i use this deck okay we're going to do the flip and then we're going to do oracle and other things I got the Muse Tarot to see how I like collage decks because it was mass market and therefore it was cheap experiment to see how I use collage decks. It's pretty. I like it. The diversity is about one third and a diversity of that level um, is diverse somewhat when I look through a deck. But if I'm using it for a client reading the likelihood of my client seeing in a three to five card spread a diverse set of cards is low. And they're more likely to see at a spread where they're tokenized and the only where there's just one person of color. Um, sometimes I look out and there's more. The, the cards can't just be like we're only choosing primarily people of color to for your client. They can't do that. It's, it doesn't work that way. I need all 78 cards. <clears throat> okay. So I bought, because everybody said, light seers. And um, I discovered the diversity was the same. So I was like, I hesitated to use it. But the reality is, it, um, it's kind of like Star Spinner. Um, it's an easy read. It's really an easy read. It's pretty. Um, the humans are so human. Um, I really can connect and see people in them. But it still has that diversity issue, but... I, I like it more than the Muse Tarot. I have not yet read the guidebook. Um, what I um, have used this for personally is um, past life readings. Um, 
um, just because there's such a range of people and um, we can come back as anyone. And my heritage is mixed um, French and Lakota. So um, I, I did find it useful and I did find it pretty and I see why people like it. And um, I'm probably going to move the Muse Tarot out, but keep the light seers. So that's that's the flip. <laughs> that's the flip. So Oracle decks. Last time I looked through what I was using, um, I had Oracle decks paired up with Tarot decks. Um, and that's not actually the case anymore. Um, sitting in with my large decks, um, I have Next World Tarot. I have um, the Moot My Kids Affirmation Cards, which I use with my son. Um, I recently, like two days ago, um, got the Irreverent Oracle. And it is a large size and sitting with my large size decks. It is um, about the same size as the Shadow Oracle, a little bit bigger. Uh, so I got a wee bit on each side and a wee bit at the top. <clears throat> um, and the Shadow Oracle. Um, I honestly, I find I can use the Shadow Oracle in almost any situation I need an oracle. Um, if I, if I'm like, I, I need a random oracle reading, the shadow oracle delivers. There's only two cards I dislike in this deck. And, you know, in an oracle deck, you can pull a card out and still have a full readable deck. Um, so I pulled out the shaman card and, um, I pulled out the health card. I just pulled that out the other day. I was not liking it. I was like, why haven't I just pulled it? Like I pulled shaman cards. So I pulled it out. Um, the rest of my Oracle decks. I got given this beautiful tarot wrap um, to review and I adore it. And um, it, it opens up as a reading cloth and it fit every deck I have, even the next world tarot. When I was like, I want all my Oracle decks together, or at least all the ones that are of approximately the same size together. So I had this full random reading, fully random, what Oracle card do I need? So it means I can't shuffle them. And I was like, how do I do this? And um, Amanda from Indie Deck Review said, you can put them in a bag. Well, this let them sit upright. Um, I'm trying to show you in my hands. Um, since it's too low for the, it lets them sit upright and covered. And then I just fold this back and I run my hands over and I pick a card and, um, I am a week maybe in adoring this. So the wild witch Oracle still happily adoringly sits in here um the uh, divine portal um oracle aka the pussy oracle sits in here <laughs> um the prairie majestic oracle sits in here the messages from your higher self sits in here all right we we do have kyle gray's um angels and ancestors um, with some cards pulled, we have, um, the, um, oh, I'm blanking again. It's the reconcil the truth decks reconciliation edition, um, in here we have, um, my, um, shadow to the major arcana or oracle of colonization in here. Is there anything I haven't pulled? Yeah. I have Earthcraft in here. Um, and 
I am loving this ability to draw really randomly and um and yeah it's it's hitting my happy places i'm really thrilled with my little method that i have going on here what do we have the witch of light illuminating the right direction that's how this current oracle system feels for me. It's illuminating the right direction. I love the Wild Witch Oracle Main North Market on Etsy. I'm going, I'm going to attempt to <sighs> list these decks, but I also want to upload this quickly. So I might like upload it and um, then find all the deck lists and then edit the description and add it in. All right. What else is up? If you saw my mail video, I recently received um, a scripting journal, the Tarot and Politics Zine, and um, this Spiritual Chicks four card tarot poll. And um, that meant my, I jumped, I left half my last tarot journal undone and jumped into here and suddenly had a place to make my daily checklist again. And I'm like, oh damn. I actually do need a bullet journal because the only way I get everything or close to everything done in a day is when I have a checklist where I can check it off. Cause like that, like that as a Leo rising, um, all my signs, all my signs sit in houses of the same element. So my, even though I have no, placements in earth signs um or how, in earth signs um i my they're in earth houses um so you know it it makes my um my sixth house pretty happy to have a um, checklist checked off <laughs> and um so yeah these these inadvertently taught me today, yes, was last night or this morning, that I really do need a bullet journal. Um, so people are like, Auntie K, you have a manifesting um, journal? Um, it depends how you see manifesting. I, I, you know, manifesting can often be um, misassigned as privilege <laughs> like privilege can be called manifesting far too frequently um this is like my spiritual goals is how i'm using this journal i am listing my spiritual goals wh where i want to go what i want to work on what i want to practice and learn um this is my spiritual goals and that's what's going in there I'm really enjoying Spiritual Chicks Four Card Tarot Notebook. Um, the only personal difficulty is that I do a weekly wrap up. And so I tried squeezing my weekly wrap up onto a page. And um, huh, I might need to design a weekly wrap up journal. <laughs> That goes alongside this. Um, and I just might need to design it myself, a weekly wrap-up journal. And, you know, then maybe have monthly wrap-ups in there too. Who knows? That's that's um, that's what where I'm going. That's what I'm thinking. And that is what my tarot stuff looks like today. Is there anything here I haven't shown you? Um... There is a prototype deck I adore, but it's a prototype deck, so I'm not showing you, but I have ordered it on Kickstarter, and um, which has successfully funded, and then you will see it all over my channel. Um, I have some smaller Oracle affirmation-y things that I don't use frequently like maybe once a month 
but I don't not use them to the, you know, like I don't want to pass them on because I don't not use them. Um, I have, an, I have another prototype deck that I reviewed and I'm like, mm, 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 on it. Um, but haven't passed it on yet because I've also thought about how I can use it differently that works for me. Um, and, um, so essentially what I'm doing is showing you, um, what I do like and use, um, and that's like, you know, a mass market deck that I'm not using or a deck I'm passing on for um, reasons that I think you might want to be aware of. I'll always share that. Um, <clears throat> Kim from Abundant Life Tarot put up a great video that I watched this morning or last night. Um, and... Um, talking about discernment and collecting. And uh, so here's my disclaimer. I will tell you what decks I have gotten as reviews and what decks I've purchased. And I will tell you, um, if I've gotten a deck for review and purchased it, I'm probably going to tell you I purchased it. Um, if I remember, I'll tell you both. Um, because I put my money in it because then I really liked it. <laughs> um, and if I think a deck is problematic, I am going to tell you. I already know, and I'm going to share this with you. I look, there's how I feel about a deck when I first open it. <clears throat> Three months in, six months in. Six, in that three to six months, a lot of decks go out of my collection. So I will often let you know how new a deck is to me when I'm telling you about my relationship to it. Um, and especially in, and let you know where I am at with it. Um, how, so you can judge how much of my thrilledness of a deck is, um, based on its newness. Like I said, with the neck, with the uh, desert illuminations, I'm loving this deck. I think it will become a favorite, but I'm hesitant to say that yet. Because I haven't even made it to the three month mark with this deck. It's new. Um, I am in the three to six with this deck. And it's a study deck still. New study deck. But these are study decks. And I don't expect them going anywhere soon. I got Mari's deck when it first came out on Kickstarter. Mari sent me um, this copy with the new um, finish. That is like got a slip to it, yet is still matte. And so I gave my original to um, my best friend. Three months. Love it. Over six months on my own. Love it. Way over six months on this. I think I'm coming up to a year on this. Several years. Um, three months. Um, nine months. So, um, in Next World Tarot, I've had, um, since the pocket edition came out and then I passed it on and got the big one. And so that's, that's important in the relationship. Um, because it, I absolutely recognize that there's things I forgive myself. I forgive my decks for being when they're new that after a time period, I'm just, I don't have that forgiveness anymore. And it's a card deck, so it can't change. <laughs> um, so, you know, re relationships adjust and, um, that's something I will do my best to share in when I talk about um, what I like about decks. 
I pass on very few Oracle decks. Um, I have recently passed on Moonology in Animal Kin. I almost passed on Angels and Ancestors. There's some cards in it I don't use because they don't speak to me. Um, and there's some cards in it um, I, when I put them all in here, I was like, there's cards I would take out when I was reading for myself, but put in for the right client. And so now they're all in there and I just trust that I'll draw the ones I need. And, uh, that's, that's my relationship with, uh, my current decks. See y'all later, folks.